Santiago is the capital city of Chile and is located in the country's central valley, surrounded by the Andes Mountains as well as many other standalone hills. The location of the city inside a valley causes a prolonged presence of smog, which is even worse in winter. This has long been a problematic issue in Santiago. Air pollution in the form of industrial waste and large amounts of carbon emitted from the many vehicles in the city further intensifies the smog problem. Santiago experiences other many climatic conditions including the urban heat island effect which is caused by the rising skyline of buildings including the Gran Torre which is Latin America's largest building. The city is located in a geologically active place that is prone to many earthquake events and flooding. Santiago has more than 5 million inhabitants and the majority of them use private transportation. Every day, thousands of tons of carbon is released into the atmosphere, making Santiago's air the most polluted in Chile. Over the years, there has been limited amount of research done in Chile regarding climate change and its effects on urban regions, or conversely, how urban regions, including Santiago, have had an impact on the rates of climate change. The National Climate Change Action Plan makes it evident that Chile's cities and urban regions must adapt to climate change to be able to meet the changes that will occur. This is especially the case for the country's capital city. The Notre Dame Global Adaptation Index is a global index which measures the vulnerability and readiness of countries to climate change effects. I will be comparing the index of Chile to that of its neighboring countries, Argentina, Bolivia and Peru. Compared to its neighbouring countries, Chile is better suited and equipped for the adaptation to climate change because Chile has the lowest vulnerability score and the highest score for readiness. The Stabilisation Wedge Game Board, also known as the Piscardi Wedge Theory, puts forward eight strategies that each could save or decrease current carbon emission levels. For Chile, I have decided on three wedges under efficiency and conservation. One wedge under fuel-based strategies. And four wedges under renewables and biostorage. The first wedge is transport conservation, where a wedge would be achieved if the number of miles travelled by car were cut in half. Such a reduction in driving could be achieved if Urban planning leads to more use of mass transit and if electronic communication becomes a good substitute for face-to-face -face meetings. The second wedge is building efficiency. We're cutting emissions by 25% in all new and existing residential and commercial buildings would achieve a wedge worth of emissions reduction. Carbon savings from space and water heating will come from both end-use efficiency strategies like wood and roof insulation and renewable energy strategies like solar water heating and passive solar design. The third wedge is efficiency in electricity production. We are producing coal-based electricity with doubled efficiency would save a wedge worth of carbon emissions. The fourth wedge is fuel switching for electricity. 
Because of the lower carbon content of natural gas and high efficiencies of natural gas plants, producing electricity with natural gas results in only about half the emissions of coal, a wedge would be achieved if natural gas plants displaced similar coal electric plants. The fifth wedge is wind electricity. To gain a wedge of emission savings from wind displacing coal-based electricity, current wind capacity would need to be scaled up by a factor of 10. The sixth wedge is solar electricity, where arrays of photovoltaic cells would be needed to convert sunlight electricity, providing a source of CO2-free and renewable energy. The seventh wedge is wind hydrogen, where wind hydrogen displaces vehicle fuel. The final wedge is soil storage. Conversion of natural vegetation to cropland reduces soil carbon by one half to one third. However, soil carbon loss can be reversed by agricultural practices that build up carbon in soils, such as reducing the period of bare fallow, planting cover crops, and reducing duration of the soil. A wedge of emission savings could be achieved by applying carbon management strategies in agricultural soils.